Okay, <laughs> are we live? Can somebody please say, I didn't delete the stream, I just left it going. We're live? People can hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. Oh, so there is, I will get this right one week. I promise to all of you that I will get everything right. Do we have everything else ready to go over this side? Hopefully, Hopefully we think we have a thumbs up for this. So I'm going to just jump in and keep going. If you've joined me and uh, I, I wasn't here, I am now here. Um, it, this whole situation takes a little longer than what I'd initially hoped, but that just happens. So let's jump in. This is a, another pick live show. And today I'm looking at your street photography as voted by you. So we go live every Tuesday. We aim to be live at 11 a.m. However, it's 11.40. It usually takes a little bit of time. So um, now that we've got the show already going, we're going to jump in and we're going to talk about next week's show because this is where you guys get to vote on what you want to be next week's theme. Now, I want to start having the challenge be more of a challenge than really challenge you guys rather than just going through all of your old photos, but actually look at what you uh, actually look at the theme and try and do something new. So this week, what we're going to do is your options are red or blue. Now, if you want to vote on this, all you have to do is head over to um, Instagram, go to photos in color and go to my story. And on there, you are going to see this. People are already voting. It looks something like this. Here we go. Pick live and um, you can vote on red or blue and that's going to be the challenge for next week. So that's already live, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. A few other things before we get into actually reviewing your photographs. I'm going to talk about this number right here. This is the cat drive. I, made, I talked about it in last week's live show and I made a video all about the cat drive. I'm going to give this away today during this live show. So stay tuned for this live show to see if you win this. Now, if you, if you want to know how to win, it's really simple or how to enter. You just have to go to my YouTube channel and go to the cat drive video and leave me like the video and leave a comment underneath that on why you want to win the cat drive. And what I will do in about half an hour is I have a piece of software that automatically runs through all the comments and randomly selects a winner. And that person will be sent the cat drive completely for free, no matter where you are in the world. We can do that, right? Yes, we can do that. I just made that up. So we're going to send one of these. So um, let's have a look at the cat drive. I have a video all about it. I want with more storage or less storage. So that's a challenge. But one terabyte is pretty Good. And honestly, the price for this isn't that much more than an actual one terabyte hard drive. This is super sleek. I personally think that this should win a design award because it's stunning. There's a black and gold one and a white and silver one. one. Okay, so that there is a little bit of the cat drive video. Head over, look at the video right now and leave a comment in the description why you want to win and you will win one of these. It is a one terabyte external hard drive that you can run on your local network. It's actually amazing. And um, that was not sponsored really. They just sent me one for free. Okay, so what is up next? I'm gonna talk about, we've just had Black Friday, the Black Friday sales, and we've just had Cyber Monday for the Cyber Monday sales. I have um, something called Pick Presets. If you don't know what Pick Presets is, it is a fully um, fledged Lightroom preset system. It's got over, 200 presets in there. It's also the Lightroom preset system that gives you 200,000 different options. It's incredibly powerful. It took me many years and many hours to build. It's currently on offer for 45% off. And that runs to the end of today, I believe. And the coupon code for that is Cyber17. That's C-Y-B-E-R-1-7. And you can get 45% off that. Let's have a quick look at Pick presets. This is pick presets.
to create. So that there is pick presets. Head over to photosyncolor.com and get 45% off. I also have a um, Photoshop training course and there's 45% that off that as well. So go check it out. Anyway, that was lots of talking today. And what I'm gonna do now is share something with you. I'm gonna do this each week is a video that I really like. Um, we're gonna see if we can get this loaded up. This is a video that r had Rosie and I absolutely howling in laughter yesterday. Nothing to do with photography, but as it's the Christmas season and it's getting into the holiday season, this made us laugh. So we're gonna watch about 20 seconds of this just because I think it's brilliant. Let's cue this video. Okay, so that video is going viral on Facebook right now. Has nothing to do with this channel, apart from I think every single person can probably relate to having a tea towel on their head, to holding a baby, to add the tinsel and singing. Uh, we thought it was brilliant. So whoever shared that originally, it's brilliant. Um, okay, so now finally we're gonna get on to critiquing your Photos. Now this week is street photography and you still have time to upload your best street photography photo. All you have to do is in the description below me, right here, there is a link. Click on that and upload one of your photographs and hopefully I'll get to it in today's live show. Okay, so that is it for the intro for today. Now let's jump in and have a look at your photos. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to jump over to, to the develop module here and just close down those tabs. And this first photograph here was sent in by Ide at Mutuk, Mud Maduk. I'm so Maduk. I'm so sorry about saying your names. I have to apologize every week for this. So let's jump in here. This is a beautiful photograph of street photography. We've got a nice tree lined street. Um, it's a not quite black and white, my guess is it's a sepia tone, and they brought down the blues in the sky. So to do that, I'm gonna show you where that would be. Over on the side, they've probably gone down to the HSL, then in the luminance, they've gone to blues and they've pulled it down. Now that's not going to work because we don't have any color in this image, but that's how they brought down that sky and it's worked really well. The composition is great. I think what I would do though is if, this is the, it should be bang center if it's supposed to be the center. So I would actually crop a little bit more like this. So if it's in the middle, it's in the middle. Um, but this is a great example of a kind of landscape street photography. Let's keep going, nice work. Um, okay, so this is Abhishek Badia. Um, this is a great example of street photography. It is capturing people in their environment. Usually, when we talk about street photography, what that is is you're capturing somebody in their current environment. Meaning, you're walking down the street, you pull out your camera, you take a photograph, and it's, um, it's not really set up, is usually what a street photography is going to be. Capturing the environment. Okay, so this is a good example of this. I like the color grade on it. Could have probably lifted the shadows a little bit. And if I'm going to be honest, it looks to me like you've, you've used that dreaded thing that I hate, the clarity on this a little bit heavy. But outside of that, I think it's a nice image and you've captured people sitting in the street there. So great work. Let's keep going. Okay, this is from Adam uh, Mikalski. Mikalski, if that's how you see your name. Um, this is a great example of street photography. Now it's a little dark. I think I'd want to just lift it up like this and maybe pull that, pull back the black. Something more like this. We'll look at the before and the after. That's what I'd want to bring it out a little bit. Um, lots of lines, converging lines, curves, and somebody captured it. Looks like they are not involved with the camera person at all, almost like they're looking through at a piece of artwork on the wall or something. But either way, really beautifully captured photograph, um, a great example of street photography. So nice. One thing I would do, I'm gonna quickly do this though, is if it's gonna be black and white, 
Honestly, you've got some yellows left in this. I would, if you're gonna make it black and white, let's go black and white, just cut all the color out. That for me makes a huge difference. Keep going. Okay, street photography, and this is a photograph of a street or pathway. Nice leading lines. We've got the, the straight line just off center here, kind of in the right-hand third, and then you've got a leading line coming directly across the image over here, drawing our focus to three characters just here at the back. I think this is a wonderful example of using leading lines to bring focus, nice black and white image, and it brings you into focus. The only thing that would have been really great on this would if these guys here were maybe facing forwards, I'm not quite sure. Um, let me have a look at those highlights. Okay, so we are blown out on the this pillar here. Honestly, it doesn't bother me that much because you can see you wanted to bring out the people in the background, which meant that we had to overexpose the highlights a little bit. Um, great work though, nice work from Chris S. Um, nice um, shot in Germany. Welcome Germany. Okay, from David Collette or Colette. This is a wonderful street photo. You see what we've got here? We have all of the um, action, there's action going on. They're walking towards the camera. It's obviously some street festival. It really is fantastic on this. They've really captured the moment. One thing that I would do here, and, I, and I've said it in my other live shows, is be careful of that vignette. You put a vignette on this, which brings focus, but his hand is in the vignette, and so is his face slightly. So one of the major subjects that you've got in here is now gone darker, yet the guy behind him is well lit. So be careful of your vignettes that it's not really covering the subject. What I'm going to try and do, I, I might be able to, using the brush tool, bring out the shadows like so. I'm just gonna bring out the shadows just over here on this guy. Maybe even bring up the exposure, see if I can bring him out. Okay, something like that. If we, it's not perfect, but look at the before and the after. You see, we just brought him out a little bit. I've got the background here, so I wouldn't worry about that. But this is a great example of an action, action photograph. Okay, so I am reviewing your photos right now, which is something that um, I do every single week, but I also like to give you guys the opportunity to, to what, what are we doing? Critique my photos. So for example, to do this, I have posted on my Instagram, which is Photos in Color, and the last photograph that I've posted is one of my street photos. This was um, shot in Paris a few years ago, and it's, me, how I've captured the um, fireworks around the Eiffel Tower. Have we cropped in a square, Rosie? Or was it originally square? We cropped it in. Okay, what we're going to probably do, we're gonna delete that and just re-add it without the crop on it. So just wait 30 seconds for that and then you can go on, comment and give me your thoughts on my street photography. Okay, so do we have any questions? Um, well, someone's just asking, um do you have any plans about coming to Europe in the near or far future? Um, 100%. Europe, Europe, Europe in the near to far future. 100%. I'm from the UK originally. My family live in England. Rosie's family lives in England. We love to travel to the UK and around Europe. So um, we'll probably be there at the beginning of next year at some point. That's usually when we, we go. We, we try and go about twice a year. If you guys are interested in, say, a meetup or something like that, we could always arrange that in a city somewhere and we could all meet up for a few days and hang out and take some photos. That'd be cool. Um, any more questions? Um, no, not really. Some. Uh, oh, yes, one just came in. Are there any rules or laws we should consider when photog photographing in the street? Sorry. Laws or rules when photographing in the street. Okay, so what we're talking about here is if you take somebody's photograph who has ownership and can you actually use that? Now, whoever takes the photograph has ownership of the image. However, if there is a subject in the photo, a specific single person, then if you wanted to sell that photograph, then technically you should have a model release form for that person. It's not always possible. But if you want to use it for your own purposes, then of course that's absolutely not a problem. 
It's a little bit difficult when you go, go onto social media. Um, I've not really heard of anybody ever getting in trouble for taking a photograph and posting it on social media. Usually the laws are this. It's more of a moral law that you should follow. And that is, are you showing the subject in a bad light? If you're showing that, that's not lighting, but as in, are you showing them in a way which is negative towards them? If you are, then you probably shouldn't be taking the photograph and you shouldn't be sharing it. You should always show that person in a positive or neutral light. Now, if you're doing um, photography for news networks or whatever, then that's a little bit different because you're capturing a story and you can use that, you can sell that image because it is, there's laws within the news world which is, if it is telling the story, if, if you are using it and it is a direct need for that story, then you can use it. Now, one other little tip for this is if you're shooting on the street and you, you see somebody that you'd like to capture, go and ask them. I do it all the time. I'll be there and I'll say, oh, hey, I would really like to take your photograph. Would you mind? Now, you don't need to have a model release form for that or you don't need to make it a bigger deal. But if you ask them politely, um, honestly, eight times out of 10, people say yes. And if they say no, well, that's fair enough. That's their choice. It's their face, okay? So there's no real hard and fast laws. You just can't take a photograph of somebody and sell it for profit without having a model release form. Outside of that, kind of good to go. Um, remember, if you do want to ask me any questions about this topic or photography, cameras, lenses, or equipment, anything like that, you can just ask me in the comments and I'll answer them during the live show. Rosie, have we posted that on Instagram? It's up, yeah. Okay, we now have it on Instagram. Please go and look at that photograph. Give me a comment. Tell me what your thoughts are. I do read every single one of them. Okay, here we go. Back into Lightroom. And let's keep on reviewing these photos. Okay, so great example from... Oh, another one's just come in. Let me just come back here. And... Oh, more are coming in right now. Um, just give it a second while this loads. Here we go, back to this photo. Um, this is a great example of street photography. You've got a location, you're obviously near a port, you've got a cruise ship in the background. You've got a beautiful leading line cutting across it, it's showing a hill. You do have a subject on a bike and it looks like you've even captured them looking at the camera. I'm not sure if you shouted them or made a loud noise to get them to turn, but either way, this is a really, really great shot. It's environmental, it's showing the person in the location. Really great work, Filippo. Filippo. Okay, this one here is Gabor Silvio. Um, beautiful. So this is, it looks like somebody playing, uh, two guys playing backgammon on the street. Um, I'm not sure where this is. <laughs> it's funny, it's called The Hunger Games. <laughs> um, I'm not sure where this is um, shot, but it's a great image. I really, really like it. Maybe it's two veterans. It looks like he's got a flag on his um, uh, his jacket there. I think it's captured the moment really well. You've got the nice surroundings. You've got the, the, the mottled lighting coming from the trees above. It's well captured. There's, there's a lot of blue in this image. I would want it to be black and white. Again, if it's going to be, if you look at the difference, this is color, there's a bit of blue left in it. It's gonna be black and white. I think make it black and white, just be bold on that. But overall, nicely composed image. Um, Maybe what would have been good is if we could have captured a bit of interaction between the two players. Keep moving. Okay, this is from Isadora Stanojevic. Sorry, I try. <laughs> Rosie just said give up on people's names. <laughs> um, okay, let's keep going on this. Um, I really like this photograph. Um, it is of a street, I wouldn't say it is street photography, this is more of landscape photography or cityscape photography. Um, I like the long exposure, we've captured the movement of the lights, it is a great photograph. But let's come to me for a second because I want to talk about this. Um, street photography, it's not photographs of streets. Now, traditionally street photography is capturing the action within a street without the subjects knowing that you're doing it. So it's about the environment, people interacting with their environment as opposed to a photograph of a street. Okay, let's jump back in and keep going. Um, wow, 
love this. This is from Ivan Matthew. Um, you're here every single week tuning in. Thank you so much. Um, I love this. So what we've got is a nice slow shutter speed, which is what, how we've captured the motion blur of the guy walking across the frame. But the focus is on the background, which my guess is, I don't know if these are actual paintings or I think they are actual paintings. And if they are, they are fantastic works of art. Or they might just be um, a kind of billboard posted onto the wall. Either way, beautiful work, love the composition. I think we're a little off on our, it's a little off to the side there. And we've actually got a bow going on there. That's from the lens. Let's see if we can come down and see lens corrections, if it'll find the lens by clicking here, it did find the lens. Um, and I'm actually gonna pull out the distortion a little, see here on the distortion, I can actually manually do it. This was the original, no, nope, this was the original, okay? And when you actually do the lens corrections, it kind of goes the other way a little bit. But if I was to pull that back, you can see now our lines are nice and straight, and it just brings that image back to life. Um, Great work, I like the long shutter speed. I'd have gone even longer. What, what are we on here? Let's see how, how long that shutter speed is. Um, it was one one hundredth. I'd have got that for to, you know, half a quarter of a second, which would have been great on that. Nice work. Okay, okay, this is great street photography. This here, we have people interacting in the street. There's obviously two photographers. We've got one person shooting Olympus, another person shooting Canon. Um, oh, look at that Olympus lens popping out of the fold-out. It's an Olympus Stylus One. That is a cool camera. I think that is a film camera. Oh, I don't know, actually. I don't really know what the Stylus One is. It's, it's cool, no matter what. Um, I like it that she's checking out her photos over here. This one's glancing across, maybe commenting on her photography. Nice work. My hope would be here a little bit, maybe wait for the subjects to remove their hands from their faces. But apart from that, this was done by um, Javier G Gallardo. Um, but nice photo, really, really great shot. That's a perfect example of street photography. Okay, um, Katrina Grabusti. Um, this is fantastic. Wow, what a photo, was this shot on film? I think this was shot on film, or it's a very good film emulator. Um, it was, uh, let's see what we have, if I come into library, let's see if it will actually tell us the camera. There is no camera, so my guess is this was scanned in, um, so it was taken on a black and white um, film. It looks beautiful, I, I love this. I love the composition, I love the kid through the glass, he's like pulling a funny face. Everything about this is exactly what a great photo should look like. And it fits into the street photography because it's environmental, the, the, the kid's inside his environment. One more, then we're gonna move on to the next section um, of today. So this here, okay, so this is, is street photography. Um, it looks like there's a lots of roadworks going on in the street. Um, there's a sunset. I just don't think it's that interesting. Um, Mal Gorzata Mall. Um, I think with all the fences, I can see what you've been trying to capture. Maybe if you'd have got lower to the ground, you've maybe added in a bit of a sunset back here. Um, I just don't think it's particularly interesting as a subject matter for this. So um, yeah, I think a little different on composition there. Okay, let's come back to me here. I'm going to talk a little bit about, I'm looking up here because we've got a list of all the things I do in the live show. Um, I am going to do, oh, some favorite photographs of mine. So this, I'm going to talk a little bit about some street photography and one street photographer, which maybe you've all heard of, and if you haven't, you should. And that is this. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look at Vivian Mayer. Now, let's talk about Vivian Mayer for a second. Just cut back to me on this camera. Okay, so Vivian Mayer, she was a photographer that was discovered after she'd passed. Nobody even knew that she was a photographer. She was a nanny, <clears throat> and I'm not even quite sure where she was a nanny, somewhere, I think she spent time in New York, but it was outside of New York. She was a nanny and that was her job. 
but she also loved photography and she would go out on the weekends and photograph with, with a medium format Hasselblad camera. I believe it was a Hasselblad. Anyway, a gentleman was at an auction and somebody was selling a box of rolled up film that had not been developed yet that was found in an attic in a house. And a guy bought them all, developed them all, and found what is absolutely stunning street photography. He then went and made a documentary all about this. Um, first of all, we're gonna look at through some of these photographs, and then we're gonna show you a little bit of this documentary, and I would recommend going and watching it. It's a really great way to spend an hour of your time watching all about this Vivian Mayer. So let's have a look here. So these are all shot at medium format, and you can see, look at these photographs. This was from a photographer who was completely and utterly unknown. She, um, while she was alive, no, most people didn't even know that she took photos. And you can see she nailed, look at this photo. It is just perfect. That's um, Kirk Douglas. And she, she took that photograph, she just showed up and was taking all of these stunning images. And really, to reiterate the story here, these photographs, she didn't even see them. They were developed after she had passed. So most of her photography, she hadn't even seen herself. And her work is absolutely brilliant. Let's cut to the documentary a little bit and let's watch 30 seconds about this and hopefully you'll all go and watch this. It's, it's Vivian Mayer, you can go to vivianmayer.com and there is a short film about her. So let's have a little look about that. She would take us and we would just walk in the worst parts of town. I think she liked that. You know, maybe we just didn't understand her. What would you say to Vivian now? What drove you to hide yourself away? I did her, why the f <laughs> Why the f didn't you ever show me all the stuff you did? I thought I was a friend of yours. In death, she is getting the fame that she never had in life. I'm uncovering an artist if I'm leaving this giant boulder. Okay, so that was a little clip about it. It's called Finding Vivian Mayer. Now, if you go to vivianmayer.com or just search that online, you will find it. It won loads of awards. This was a few years ago. This is not new news, but she's a great example of, street, of a, a wonderful street photographer who honestly, she just loved the action of taking photos and following people and really figuring out how to capture them. And she didn't even look at her end result. It's a great, after, great way to spend the afternoon. Okay, what are the votes looking like on Instagram? Um, red. Red, red by how much? Um, red is at 53%. Ooh, is at it is so close. Red and blue, we are really tightly split here. So get on to Instagram and get voting for what you want the theme to be next week. I'm going to show you here a few things because I don't want people to get confused on what I mean with when we're looking at these themes. So let's come to my computer screen a second. I actually have a Pinterest board and I'm gonna be doing this each week. If you just go to Pinterest, search photos in color, I will put a link in the description of each live show um, as you can upload them to see some examples. Now when I say red photography, we don't need photos of strawberries and roses. Now you can upload those, however, do not upload photos of, of um, roses. I, I, I don't want to see yeah, those. Photos of, me. Uh, photos, photos of Rosie would be fine. <laughs> no. So um, these are some great examples of how we can use color in images. So for example, here, we've got a beautiful red dress and we've got lots of options down here. Um, you could have fruit, which is in that color tone, which is another great way of doing it. Then we've got some more creative ways of doing it. So this is finding the color in environments and making that color stand out. So this image, we've obviously got rid of all of the other color apart from red. Um, this is a great example. You could use this for both red and blue because um, you can see on the image down here, you have both red and blue there. We've got um, a close-up of a raspberry, would work for red. We've also got creative lighting, which is just here, the red lighting on the model. And if you recognize this, girl here. This here uh, from Matthew Guido, this photograph 
from the same series, his photograph was purchased and used as the new image for Lightroom CC Classic. So if you open Lightroom CC Classic, you'll see a version of this photograph, but it's with blue and pink and not straight red. Um, and then obviously got colored pencils. This is a great example of blue. You see, we, we were able to find these colors in our surroundings without just thinking literally, what is blue? Let's take a photograph of it. I want you to get really creative with this and challenge yourself. Again, let's have a look at a few more red ones. We've got this, which is um, a moving bus behind a lady, so that's really great. And this is very simple but beautiful. It is a hand that has paint on it, but it's creative and it looks really great. So this week, I want you to challenge yourself. Um, this person here has even changed the whole tone in Photoshop of the image to be red while keeping it looking somewhat natural. So really, really great work. Okay, anyway, that's enough of that. Let's come back over here and let's review some more of your photos. Where did we get up to here? We did this one, we did that one and loved it. We did this one. Okay, now here we go. This is street photography. This is from Christopher Solgel. Um, so it's a great example of street photography. I just don't think that the, the subject matter, maybe you've got a yacht in the background with somebody begging, maybe that's the interest here. Maybe he's not begging, he's just drinking a coffee. Um, I just think that you could be way closer in on the subject or use a shallow depth of field. It's just a very flat, nothing is drawing my attention apart from some boats here. So um, work harder on your composition and definitely some, um, maybe shallow depth of field would have helped you there. Okay, great, street photography, Nitin Jane. Um, looks like a guy sitting on the street, you've just captured him, maybe he was just glancing or you called his name or something and he turned around and looked. I don't think this is a portrait. Um, if it was, no, I think this is street photography. Um, it's taken in the street for one, but it doesn't look very posed. So um, nice work there, that's, that's a really good shot. Let me see what would happen if we were to crop this in a little bit like this. No, I like the original. Great work. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so here we go. We've got from Owen Wong. Um, two people, somebody on the phone, looks like they're playing a game. And this person, we can't see what they're doing. Uh, they're playing Bubble Burster. Is that even a game? Candy Crush? Something like that. Um, are they in Boston? I don't think so. Um, He's got a Boston hat on, I wonder, maybe they're from Boston. Maybe it's in Venice. Uh, beautiful photograph, I like the boat going by. It's interesting that there's this beautiful scene in front of them. They're light, sitting down here, they've got these amazing speedboats going by, they've got this stunning setting here, yet he's playing Candy Crush. Um, Venice, Italy. So I think that's a pretty funny um, photo there. I'd have got lower. I'd have got lower and I'd have got a shallower depth of field. Because if you'd have got lower here, you'd have got more of the buildings there because you'd have tilted your camera up slightly. But Owen Wong, I think it's a great example of street photography. Oh, he um, said that he edited this after watching one of my tutorials. Nice, and it was edited using Google Silver Effects Pro. Now you say Google Silver Effects Pro, it's no longer Google. Google just sold Silver FX Pro to DxO Mark, just if you wanted to know. So DxO Mark, um, they do all the ratings on cameras and lenses, and um, Silver FX Pro is part of, um, what, what was it called? It was owned by somebody else at first. Google purchased it, and it just got bought by Silver FX, um, DxO Mark. Anyway, let's keep going. Patrick Binneveld. Um, Great work, so I like this, it's, it's a cross-processed image, meaning that we've really brought out the colors and we've switched out the colors a little bit. You can see up here, this the yellow, the, these are a little bit psychedelic on the coloring. I may have even brought down the vibrance slightly on this to make it a little bit more natural if you look the before and after. But again, it's a nice shot, a little bit snapshotty. For this to be more creative, I would have lay down on the floor and shot up and got the, got the floor to nicely blur out and shot up to the trees. Um, but it is some street photography and it, it draws you in nicely. I think it's a nice photo. So let's keep on going. Let's do 
Oh, this one and one more, then we're going to go to questions. Do we have questions, Rosie? Uh, yeah. Yep, okay, cool. So let's have a look here. I love this photo. Stephen Clough. Um, wow. This is a great photo. I love it that the, the subject is kind of blurred out, you know? Maybe it was the focus. Maybe that was done in post-production. Uh, or maybe you just missed the focus. The focus looks like it's closer. I don't care. This is a wonderful photo. If you get a waterfall, it looks like you've got some steam or mist coming in over here. Super high contrast. You've got a beautiful bit of reflection. I'm going to see what this looks like in black and white. Nope, I think it looks better in color. The one thing that I probably would do is straighten it. I don't think it's very straight. So if I go like this, this to me, oh, maybe it was straight. It's a bit weird. Ah, that's a little bit straighter for me. Um, beautiful. Absolutely brilliant photograph. I think you've captured a feeling and energy. And you know what? Usually, and I, I've said it in lots of my live shows, to have the subject walking into the frame, not walking out of the frame. This one is walking out of the frame. But for some reason, it works. It just works. So there you go. Learn the rules, learn to break them, and come up with a great image like this. One more photograph, and then we'll go into questions. Okay, from Cybo Lands. Um, I like this. 105 mil ISO 400. Um, it looks to me like you've either added a lot of grain or a lot of sharpness to this. Um, but for this image, I don't really mind it because he kind of blends in to the background. It's a very busy photograph and I think it works for this image. Again, I'm going to talk one more time about vignette. You vignetted his leg. Uh, it vignettes the same as the other four corners. I would maybe not have vignetted this image. Um, but either way, I think you've done a, a great example here of um, street photography. So it's nice. Okay, cool. Let's come back and let's see some questions. Do we have some? Yes, we do. Um, what should we look at when we take a street photo? What are the points of interest? Mm -hmm. What, what should we look at with street photography and what, what are the points, points of, of interest? interest? Well, that is an almost infinite question there for um, how I can answer it, other than what your surroundings are. However, I think the key there is what is the point of interest? Don't just go, oh, pretty street photo, find something, okay? Whatever it might be. You might just be in a beautiful street and then there's some, some children playing. Okay, what's the best angle for that? If I get down low, can I get the perspective of the children? Maybe I can get behind something and, and, and get a, a wall here and shoot straight down the wall. So the wall closest here is out of focus. We pinpoint one part of focus and the background will blur out. So really think about it with street photography. What is the focus? What is, what is the subject? Okay, it's easy in street photography to take a picture of a street and it just becomes random. Um, so that's my main advice. The other thing is capturing action. Okay, so you don't want people sitting there usually. What are they doing? So we had a photograph earlier of people playing backgammon. What you could have done there is got down really low and actually got the backgammon pieces in focus and got, got the rest of the scene to kind of, kind of blur out or show some perspective. So definitely find what it is and then focus in on that and move around. Remember streets, you can take it from so many different angles. It's not like being in a studio where you stand and be like, that's the background, I'll photograph this way. Move around and really get creative. Get high, get low. Move to the left, move to the right. Put an object in front of you. So for example, if I was to take a photograph of, of something in front of me, if I put a some, an object here and I photograph just here, I could get this really blurry and then through it I'll get something way more interesting. So try and add layers in photography. Foreground, focus, and a background. That's what I would recommend doing. Any more questions? Yeah. Great. Um, oh, oh, when to shoot in color versus shooting in black and white? Okay, when should we shoot color in black and white? That's completely personal preference. I would say always shoot in color and edit in black and white. All the detail is there in color to turn it black and white and it gives you far more editing options because you can move the colors around. If you are a traditionalist, then shoot in black and white, but I would strongly recommend don't do that unless you are a strict traditionalist and that's what you want to do. Um, and then when it comes to editing for choosing, just decide. 
What's your style? What does it look best at? Personally, I love street photography in black and white. It gives a completely different feel, add a load of contrast to it, and it looks great. But I don't think that that's necessary. Okay, um, let's move on. I just wanna give a little shout out to Rosie here. Rosie does a great job at picking up all these questions. She always asks me things that she doesn't even know what the question is, because she's not a photographer. She just listens to me all the time. Um, and it, currently she's using a webcam to actually do this. So that's why she, her head gets so close as she does it. But she's so beautiful, it really doesn't matter. We are working on upgrades, but as most of you know, we have a few challenges with our current setup, so we're gonna fix those first. Okay, next photo. Where do we get to? Next photo, just here. Whoa, what a great photo from uh, Dimitar Vasilev. Um, Sea of love, they've called this image, and I like it. You know, it's obviously, it looks like to me a guy and a girl probably in love, and the sea is in front of them. So I like the naming of it. I'm very interested. Uh, I like the way they've got the ripples here, so they've had to have a fairly fast shutter speed, um, but not too, not like a thousandth of a second. It's more, more like half a second, so that they've got some motion in the water without freezing it. Um, it just looks great. I really like everything that they've done here. I like that they've really managed to get a silhouette. So great work. Oh, in fact, it was taken at 0.6 of a second, which is great. Um, nice work, I like it. I like this one in color. That's a great example of color. Turn this one black and white, I think we lose a lot, whereas color, we bring it all back. Here we go, let's keep going. Kyle Green. Um, so this is kind of what you what I was just talking about, having a foreground, a focus point, and a background, but then you've got a row of cars. I, I, I think this is a snapshot. I don't think this is particularly of anything interesting, apart from maybe that's the only horse which hasn't been broken off. Um, I, I, I think it's more of a snapshot. It's not that interesting. Uh, let's keep going. Luke Blasey. Um, Okay, this is cool. So it's somebody, it looks like they're photographing with their phone through something. But I like the composition of this. I like that there's a nice circle. They're not quite centered in it. They're looking through it. So I like those elements. A few things I don't like, I'm not in love with the fact that they're taking a photo with their phone. Um, and I think that the image edit in itself is a little flat. So um, I'm gonna do a little edit on this one. And in fact, what I'm gonna do this has just come in, so I'm not testing this. We're gonna look at some of my presets. They are, they're currently on offer, 45% off, photosandcolor.com. Um, little plug there, I have to plug my things. <laughs> so let's look at vintage film. There's all sorts of things here. Now I am editing a JPEG here, um, so we're not gonna get the best results. We should be shooting in RAW and I should be editing in RAW, but these are your JPEGs that you're uploading. But I'm gonna show you as I click through here, We've got all of these different, oh, look at that one. Fuji um, Superior Smooth, that's a beautiful look for this image. And then I'm gonna click, through. I'm gonna go somewhere a little bit more creative. Contemporary films, oh, that's added some pop to them. Because this has got a lot of outdoor, oh, look at that one, portrait heavy. Um, I'm actually gonna go down to daylight here and we're going to click morning coffee. I love what that has done. I'm gonna lift up the exposure. That, I think, really brings it to life. Uh, and then we're gonna keep going down, and let's go for something. Let's actually come into a cine stock. These are, these are really wild. Um, orange and teal, look at that, that's a cool feel. And then let's go for, um, like, in the color tones, ET, ooh, that looks cool. Then we've got our black and whites at the bottom here. I'll have to bring down that a little bit. So loads of options that we can do there and we can edit all of those um, on a JPEG as well so you saw how they work. So I like the image, I just think it needed a bit of a re-edit. Okay, let's keep going. Oliver Hadel, um, I love this. Look at that. So I guess, um, I'm not sure what city we're in. I know it says Chicago really big, but I believe that that's, um, are they in Chicago? Or is that the Chicago theater? Or is it playing the film Chicago? Is it playing the musical, musical of Chicago? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, we've got a taxi here. Um, anybody tell me, Oliver, are you live? Where is this? It is in America. 
So my guess Chicago is it's in Chicago. Chicago. Okay. It it's is State Chicago Chicago Theater. Okay, so it's in the Chicago Theater. Um, beautiful. I like the composition. It's almost square. I like the. I think you've added a bit of a tilt shift effect to this from the sides so that it's really blurry, then it's sharp down the middle. Um, I think it's great. The only thing, I think the highlights are a little blown out. You may have done that in post or maybe you just took it like that. Um, if that's going to be the case and I'd have taken the photograph a little bit darker, then boosted the shadows in post. But I think this is a fun photo. I think that you've got a really nice color grade on it. Um, so really great work, Oliver. Nice, nice, nice work. Okay, uh, we're going to do a few more, then I'm going to give away that cat drive. So, Pontus Ekaroff. Um, I love this photograph. Captain America, there he is in the middle. Nice leading lines down the center. I like that everything's nice and even. I like the black and white. You've got a nice contrast. I'd probably boost the contrast, either by using the contrast slider, um, or actually I just lift the highlights. Oh, the whites. There you go. So I'm just going to lift the highlights just to make it pop out that little bit more. But that, I, I like it. It's a fun street photograph. It's, a fa it's almost a family portrait, and the composition is great. Really, really, really good work. Okay, so if you want to win the Cat Drive, remember to go over to the Cat Drive video and um, leave me a comment. I'm going to give this Cat Drive away in about one minute. So let's see if we can do that live. I've never done it live before. That should be fun. Um, okay, Sebastian Lubinsky, welcome back. You tune in every single week. Thank you so much for your support. Um, this is a great photo. I love it. I think it's interesting. I, I like the way that we have a, an acrobat, or maybe it's just a person who's immensely strong in their upper body. Um, I love it. I think it's a really great photograph. I like the edit on it. You've got a nice... Um, I think you've added a graduated filter from the top. I'm going to show people how to do that. Graduated filter, drag it in, and you probably just brought down the exposure. Something like that, anyway. Um, I think it's a really, really nice photo. I think, though, uh, I was going to say I'd have rotated around and made the background more interesting. However, with this photo, you see what's amusing about it is it says up on the sign, and she's lifting herself up. So this is more of a contextual um, photo, and it's perfect. That is exactly what street photography is. It's contextual. It is in its surroundings. Um, great work. I love it. It's, it's, it's really good. Uh, nice example of black and white photos. This is from Taj Fintakraksanti. Whoa, that's a long name. Um, this is great. It's a very simple photograph through a, um, oh, is this a portrait studio that they're shooting what looks like to be a Hasselblad on the inside, medium format, and maybe these are the prints that they do. Um, it might be, and these are some more images here. I think the composition's interesting, uh, a little heavy on the vignette at the top, I think, but this is a great, flat, simple image, lots of contrast, um, no real focus, but I don't mind. The door's the focus, and it brings intrigue in here. In fact, I'm actually going to take the brush tool, and I'll lift the shadows. I'm going to see if we can paint in the inside. May have gone too far. Let's come out. So what we did there, we just lifted up the inside there so we can see what's going on a little bit better. Um, maybe not necessary, but cool nevertheless. Okay. This isn't really street photography. This is a photo of a street. Um, not bad. I wouldn't say it's the greatest. Um, I think it's more of a snapshot out of a window, maybe a hotel window or something. Uh, street photography, really, you should be on the street, not of the street. Um, this here is street photography. It's contextual. We're looking at um, something happening, which is some people buying, it looks like, where are we? Are we in, are we in a, a German Christmas market? That would be my first guess. Um, Estonia Christmas market. There you go. I used to live in Berlin and they had amazing Christmas markets in Berlin. Um, so th this is nice. I like it. I think I'd want more focus on the highlight over here. So to do that, I'd take a radial filter and I'd go like this 
and I'd double click it to reset the effect. And what I would do is I'd bring down the exposure and you can see I've got the outside here is what it's going to go to. And I wouldn't go that far. So I'd bring it down maybe just a hair. And then what I would do is I'd duplicate it. And on the top layer, I would then lift, make sure I invert, I then lift the inside, maybe warm it up a little bit, bring the focus to the girls, uh, lift the shadows maybe. So then what we'd get is something more like this. And now the focus has gone from general to really bring the focus in to what they're doing. Maybe gone a little bit too far, but either way, nice contextual image. Perfect, look at that, we're in London, that is Lund Tower Bridge. Um, I love it. Um, I like the edit, I love the composition. We've got nice and tight here. We've got the surroundings here, um, which is London Bridge, so we know exactly where we are. We've got a girl relaxing on a park bench. That for me is exactly what a um, street photography with context should look like. I think it might be a little bit yellow. Maybe that was the edit you wanted. Maybe that's a little bit too blue now. So I would just bring it back somewhere like that. A little yellow, and I've just brought it back a hair. Um, but Vendo Nato, Nato, Neto, um, really, really, really nice, nice work. Okay, so it is that time where, as promised, I'm going to give away the cat drive. Um, I've never done this before, so hopefully this is actually going to work. I'm gonna give away today the black and gold one. It's a one terabyte hard drive you can plug into your um, router at home and you can access your files from anywhere in the world using um, your iPhone, your iPad, your Android device, your computer, online, everything. It's really secure. Um, it sounds like I read that, but I didn't. I just know what it does because I, I use this. Um, if you want to learn more about it or if you want to go buy one, then I have a video on the cat, on cat drive. Just go and click on that link there. So how are we going to give this away? I'm going to try and figure this out. So I'm going to come, so if we go to my computer screen, because so I'm going to prove that this is real. I'm going to reload, no, I'm not I'm going to take this link at the top here, and I'm going to go to this service here, which is um, comment picker, and I'm going to pick a comment. So I'm going to paste the video up here. I'm going to hit search. It's going to come in here, and we have 177 comments. There's actually about 300 comments or something, but these are unique comments, so not replies and not commenting multiple times. So now we've done this. Oh, I already I tested it before. That, that's not the winner because that wouldn't be fair. So let's search this again. Sorry, this is the first time I'm doing this. Um, and 177, and we are now going to start the raffle by clicking down here. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm gonna do this. It's gonna go through, and the winner for the cat drive is Efrain Negron. So here we go, let me read their comment. I'm an amateur photographer. I've been following you for a little while now. Almost everything I know about Lightroom CC, I learned from you. Love to be the winner of this device, but if I don't win, keep up the good work. Well, how about this? If you're watching, you just won this. Now in the future, what I might do is um, you have to be watching to actually win. But we didn't do that today because I just thought about that. Could we just make a copy of this person's name, Efrain Negron? We're gonna be writing to you to make sure that you win and you get sent this. Happy Christmas or early whatever. For you, happy birthday, whatever you want for that. Um, oh, that was very exciting. That was the first giveaway that I've actually done live. Um, okay, so one more thing that I wanna talk about here. We only have a few minutes left, um, about 10 minutes, and we're gonna be doing some more critiquing. But I just remembered something, because we were late again. I just remembered something that I wanted to do, which is up here. No, it's not. I think it's up this side of the screen. Um, if you click the little I, then there is questions. Can we test it? Are they live? The questions? Yeah, so go onto the screen. Are you on YouTube? Yeah. So in the top corner, there's a little I. Click on that. Is there a questions? There is no I. Cards? There's no cards? Can anybody see up here, there should be a little I on the YouTube video. 
on the screen of you. Let's see, can anybody else, can anybody else do this? I'm going to try and do it now. People have found it. Why you found it? Find okay, it cool. So it does exist. Basically, all you have to do is click on that eye. This is me here. We're now playing a version of me on me. Um, so come to my screen. I'm going to show oh. you. Oh, yeah. Come to my screen, Ray. Okay, so up here there is an eye, and I have what are you most interested in learning. I've even got a typo just there. All you have to do is click on one of these options here and I'm going to be looking at doing these things so that I can actually create better content for you guys to actually learn. Look at my screen, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I'm going in the hole. Okay, so let's come back to my, not come back to my screen yet. Now we can come back to my screen and I'm going to continue looking at your street photography. Remember to get up and vote up there. It looks like a load of you found it and voted. Okay, so here we go. Vincent Boari. I cannot say anybody's name. So, um, I love this. This is a great photograph. I don't know if you're freelancing here or what you're doing to capture this image. Maybe it's a composite. Um, I literally have no idea, but you've got on the right hand side, you've got a huge blur, maybe multiple exposures on the right hand side. Then the left hand side, you've got two people that are not perfectly sharp, but pretty sharp. And you even have the leaves which are sharp here. And then on the left hand side, you've got a very intense blur. If you are live, Vincent, could you tell me how you did this? Was it created in Photoshop with multiple layers? Um, or maybe you just, my, one of my guesses is it's multiple exposures that you've got going and you've got the two subjects sitting very still and you've added the edge blur in post-production. That's gonna be my guess. Either way, I think it's wonderful. The only shame is that this guy's head is blurred out a little bit with that blur, but what a great image. I love this. I just love everything about how exciting it is. Um, I just don't know how you did it. He said one long exposure and Nikon collection. I'm Nick collection. Yeah, Nick collection. Okay, so he, he, it's, a, it's an, a long exposure image, which would mean that these two subjects weren't really moving and that it wasn't a windy day, so the leaves weren't moving. And then they've gone into Nick Collection, which is what I was talking about before, maybe using Silver Effects Pro 2. Um, Nick Collection was a company that did editing software bought by Google. Google made it free. Everybody downloaded it. I created a full five-course a uh, five video course, it's free on YouTube, how to use it, it's actually brilliant. And it was just last week sold by Google to DxOMark. So who knows what DxOMark's gonna do with it. Maybe they'll create an app. That's what I think they're gonna do with it. Anyway, moving on, that's great work. Let's keep going. Warren Freeman, uh, this is more of a landscape, not really street photography. There is a street in the background, but it's more of a landscape image. Um, so yeah, let's keep moving. This is street photography. This is brilliant. This is an indoor market. It looks like a food market. You've got the meat in the background. Um, you've got the breads just here. I think we're having a problem finding the subject matter a little bit. Is it this guy here? I think it probably is. Um, yeah, it probably is. I like it, but there's not really a focus point to it. And also I think that the uh, uh, white balance is off a little bit just because we're inside. I think that's better for the white balance. Um, I like it, but there's no real focus to that image. Um, okay, street photography. This is actually more of a portrait. This is from Helen Jenkins. Um, this is a photograph that was taken on the street, but it is set up as a portrait. So I wouldn't say really fits into street photography as a genre. We are camera down. Um, we're down to one camera, so that's fine. Um, let's keep on going. This is street photography. I would guess there's a gentleman that probably sits here playing his music um, and it's a nice photograph. <sighs> uh, I, I don't love the edit of it or the composition. I think it's just a little bit of a snapshot. Guys, I want you to work harder at creating these images for the challenges each week. Um, Adnan Alec, um, this is a nice photograph and um, well captured. 
It's got some action to it. I'd have got even lower. I'm going to whip through loads at the end now, just because we, we like to do this at the very end. Anna Marilia. Um, this is a great version of street photography. What I'm going to do is make sure it's fully black and white and lift my exposure up on this and pull down my blacks. Now, if we look at the before and the after, it's a little bit more alive. I think you've done a great job here at capturing this. Um, wow. This is not really street photography. Maybe it is. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, but I love the fact that we've got the sun here. We've got this truck driving past and the water spraying over the side. Really what I wanted here was somebody taking a photograph of the photographer behind them because probably about five seconds after this was taken, the photographer would be covered in snow. And that's the photograph that I really want to see. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a really fun photo. Keep going. Uh, photograph of some buildings. I like the colors. I like the contrast. Um, I don't think the edit is great. I think it's a little... Um, it's a little weird in the colors. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, the blue down here is a little strong. Um, let's see what they've done here. So, oh, they just moved the blacks around a little bit. Okay, yeah, I suppose you're there. Okay, so it's an interesting photograph from Dimitri, but um, not, again, not the best for street photography. This is great street photography. We've captured a great monument and somebody before it looking particularly disappointed. My guess is she's a tour guide and she doesn't have any clients today, um, which I think tells a really quite a funny story actually, which is cool. Um, a guy in a bike lane, picture of a street again. Uh, I like it, Not the, it's, there's no real focus here. What is going on? It's just a landscape image. I wanna, I wanna feel something. I wanna feel something like this from Ben Lunston. This is street photography at its best. Right here, we've got rain, we've got action, we've got motion, we've got somebody going about their normal day-to-day -day life, walking along, captured, it's in focus. Um, this is street photography at its best. I absolutely love it. Ben Lunston. Um, we're going to close on this photograph because I think it is really fantastic. Let's come back to me for a moment. Do we have any final questions? No more final questions. Um, we are going to go on here and say, oh, what was the vote? We are going to check on this. In fact, I can check. We don't have it loaded up, unfortunately. Oh, so close, but red. What are we on? Red 51 and blue 49. Oh! Red 51, blue 49. That means it goes to red. Next week's challenge is red. And I want to show you this one more time on Pinterest. Let's come to my screen. Challenge yourself with red. I don't want to just see you taking a photograph of roses and strawberries, get creative. This here, red photo, the focus is red. It doesn't have to be everything is red, just an element is red, okay? Look at this, this is a great photograph. This is black and white with red across the lips, but please don't just upload your black and white photographs that you only keep the color red in. Most of them I won't accept just because I don't think it's that interesting, um, but get creative. Look at this. This is obviously a red headlight or brake light from a car or a traffic light. Get creative with the color. Go for some strong color palettes. Make it red is next week's color. Remember, you can go and critique my photo on Instagram. Just go follow photos in color on Instagram. Um, remember that pick presets is on offer for the next what, 12 hours, 24 hours, something like that from here, um, which makes it 45% off the main price. And that's the same for the Photos in Color Ultimate Photoshop training course, where I teach you everything that you need to know about photography. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Again, we were late. Next week, we're going to try again to be on time. This was Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com. And we're out.